this is, uh, uh, these are just parts of the text that, that I'm going to present so that you can start thinking overnight, okay? That is, uh, my first question was, is it viable to think that everyone has potential for agency in the same way that is acknowledged that everyone is an organic intellectual? Because my, my, my first idea was the trouble or the challenge that I was facing with them in terms of agency, right? So I said, but wait a minute. If, if it is true that, if, okay, if true is not a good word for this, but if it is, if I can use this kind of reasoning that we are all intellectuals, I can also say that we are all agents, right? And uh, what happens then that some do not feel they are agents, okay? So this is my, my initial sentence, okay, in the text, and then I, I quote Gramsci, saying that all, it's not exactly a quotation, this is, I'm paraphrasing, all are intellectuals, in that all have intellectual and rational faculties, though not all of them uh, have the social function of intellectuals, okay, this is something that you all feel acquainted with, I suppose, right? And uh, uh, based on this premise, then I started be thinking, is it not also possible to say that we are organic agents, invested with organic agency, in allusion to the, to the Gramscian view of an intellectual being? Okay, this is just uh, something that I said before. And then I, I, I also decided to understand this a bit more, and then I, I went to Anna Arendt, Arendt, how do you to say this in English? Arendt, Arendt. Hannah, Hannah. Hannah. Hannah, yeah. And I meant it, but it does the, the family name, I don't know. Okay, anyway. So, yeah. So the idea is uh, understanding, you know, um, I mean, try to see those that study this idea of action, okay, and uh, her book uh, where she explains about Vita Activa, okay. So I, I, I found it interesting to rethink what she said, right? Uh, the capacity to action as the capacity we all have to do something, and then I quote her, say, human life is, is, is uh, in so far as it is actively engaged in doing something, right? When she's discussing action in relation to the concept of vita activa, okay? And uh, that made a lot of sense to me, understanding what happens that these people uh, want me to tell them to give them an answer or to tell them how to do or what the, what the next steps the next step is going to be right so and at the same time i know that when they close the doors of their rooms they find solutions but why not here in the group okay then uh, i also uh, tried to understand this agir that for me uh, it's, it's, it was hard for me to find a word in english it's act but at the same time, it sounded for me that in Portuguese it is stronger than act only that has multiple senses, right? And uh, agir is, is, makes more sense to me, probably because this is my language or because uh, Portuguese is, is what I speak, you know, as, as what? It's difficult to say among applied linguists to say this first name, Madaton. It's okay, it's not a, okay. So, uh, it refers to having or taking the initiative, having a live and responsible impulse to action or actions. I have to say that this responsible is not in my text, but then this, I was inspired in, in, in the Diana, Diana said, I, I like what you say, Valkyria, but I think the word responsible is missing in the text, and I like this idea, because to me, act, any act is, involves responsibility already, right? I uh, just had to make it more visible, I think, uh, to the reader, that this is what I mean, right? Um, the, the, action, the action reveals who the agent or actor is. Uh, this is also uh, from the book that I mentioned before. Right? And I like this also, to say uh, it has something to do with, with myself. So the way I act, if I act, and how I act, you know, this has to be with the agent or with the actor, okay? So, uh, understanding agency in a broad sense does not restrict to programmed and repeated occurrences, okay? This is, uh, because this is also a confusion that I noticed, you know, not a confusion, hmm, okay. This is one meaning that the teachers give, right, to agency. Because uh, they say that if they ask students to repeat something, that's an, an action, you do see. 
and uh, it is hard for them to see what is programmed, what is uh, just a repetition, or whether they have uh, this uh, sensibility to notice that something has to be done or it has, something has to change, you know, in that environment, right? This is what agency for me would also mean, right? So, uh, programmed and repeated occurrences, but to initiatives that lead people to evaluate both what is repeated and what escapes the ordinary to what repeats in a social order or even in a personal routine. So, this is uh, for me thinking of agency, understanding, always evaluating my action. And so, it's, it's not just repeating, not acting, not only doing something, but also having this concern. Okay. Uh, so, um, I then I come I come uh, late, uh, come to uh, later research when we start then working on the idea of uh, critique and agency with uh, teachers, the school teachers also. Sometimes you know more more than that. So there's been enhanced inf emphasis on critique and agency in teacher education programs recently including as a point of departure, Freddy's studies about the need for critical consciousness and freedom, right? So I'm from the time where we, we discussed a lot uh, the idea of uh, uh, consciousness and freedom and emancipation, right, here in Brazil, and in Mario as well, right? So we all discussed this uh, together, and, and much of this discussion happened with him as well. He, he was, by that time, uh, he uh, uh, directed a group of research that we all belonged to, so I think that uh, that was also a very interesting debate that we, we were lucky to have by that time. Uh, well, humans do have the abilities, this is my thought again, humans do have the abilities or capabilities to critique and to make use of their, of their latent agency, but for some reason, this either does not always occur show or has not yet been activated or made sufficiently socially and culturally visible. So this is what I, my concern when I noticed, okay, in my research with teachers, okay? Uh, so, is it possible that the explanation for the unsatisfactory educational outcome for critical citizenship and agency in Brazil, this is what then we've been doing lately, right? Uh, depicted by academic research lies in the history of the identity construction of the Brazilian teacher and citizenship. Citizen. So, three, sorry, there is a T missing over there. Three strong influences from Brazilian political history have been identified in education then. So this is, I'm trying to understand by uh, also um, understanding the history of teacher education in Brazil. And maybe we can all if we can expand this idea of uh, teacher education to uh, education, not only teacher, right? Uh, the, the three influences that we've had so far. So what are these influences? So while investigating the history of pedagogical ideas in Brazil, then I quote uh, Saviani, that is a philosopher of education in Brazil. It's it's one of the authors that I usually quote anyway. So observe that the, in the Brazilian colonial period, and he, and he quotes the, the, the period, he mentions the, the period, the Jesuits' uh, educational project with indigenous people greatly influenced those learners, okay? So he, he, he spends pages and pages explaining uh, the work of the Jesuits in Brazil. Uh, I mean, their arrival uh, in Brazil and uh, their work with the indigenous communities, right? Say the missionaries' pedagogical ideas were not restricted to religious concepts of the world, because this is then what many people assume that they, the, the Jesuits did, okay, with indigenous communities. Just because uh, the idea by that time was that the indigenous had to be converted into a religion because they had no religion and things that uh, you are going to say or discuss, I suppose, right? I mean, in, in a round table about indigenous communities. So they were not restricted to that society and education. They also incorporated the ideals of the Portuguese empire into the fundamentals of their mission, adopting a dialectically woven three-part perspective that involved colonization, cat catechesis, or similar pronunciation, and education, okay? So it, it was like, a, like they were weaving a kind of a, 
ideology, you know, it's not only religion, but also some other aspects. Uh -huh. uh, other types of colonialisms have been present here. In this sense, I would agree with, uh, I, would, I agree with Lin Mario, when uh, he, he in, another, in another context, he explains that uh, the use of colonialism here would not be the adequate word, but coloniality, I think it would make much more sense, and I agree. Other types of coloniality, for example, have been present here, though, and became evident in the phases in which Brazil was classified as third world and developing country, respectively, because then I was not interested in telling the whole history of Brazil here, so I just jumped to, uh, more, I mean, more recent times, right? Uh, this idea of uh, coloniality was very much in our minds, especially at the moment that we were classified as third world countries, right? This is something that we still, that we still uh, uh, have, a, have this concern. This morning we were talking about the third world countries or emerging countries or uh, developing countries and all the terms that we are usually given, right? And, uh, but this has, been, has become very evident, I think, in education and, I mean, socially speaking as a whole, right? And uh, they arrived with the political economic programs of development in the 50s and were intensified in the 60s during the military dictatorship when the Brazilian economic diplomacy favored international trade in the United Nations Congress for Trade and Development. Okay? So, uh, it's, it's a kind of coloniality that I would say that, we, that it was emphasized okay, in our society and teachers and students and families. And I lived part of this di uh, dictatorship as well, right, in my childhood. So I can still remember lots of actions, right, uh, that, we, that we had by that time. And I, at that time I, was, I also lived in a small town and um, I remember when I came to a city like Sao Paulo and I saw uh, the policemen riding horses and, uh, and uh, asking people to go home in, during manifestations. I was really shocked with the scene. And I, and I thought at that moment that I would see everything on television because that, that was my my idea from a, a small town, okay, in a, in a small state, that uh, everything would be shown on television. Then I think at that moment I could realize that not always, Valkyria, you should understand that fast, right? This is the idea that I had. Nothing was shown on TV, nothing on the TV news, but I had seen that. So that was an important idea, okay, that I had of dictatorship and things like that. Anyway, um, so federal laws banned school disciplines through which critical development could be promoted, such as sociology and philosophy. Though they were the two disciplines to disappear from the curriculum in Brazil. And they replaced those two disciplines by another one called civic and moral education. We learn how to, to, to sing the answer. We have to memorize it. We had to, we, we, it, it, was, it was just a, you know, we had a list of things that uh, were considered moral, civic and moral education that everybody had to learn by the time, right? But nothing related, it, it couldn't be related to critique or development of critique in education by the time. So, uh, which aimed to enhance a neutral notion of citizenship founded on morals, obedience, and patriotism according to military guidelines that were recommended to schools. So the military influenced our curriculum by the time, and we were allowed just to learn some aspects okay, of every discipline. So, uh, a technicist, this is also another part of it. Not, it's not a real sequence, just uh, highlighting in, uh, some parts of the text only. A technicist pedagogy was reinforced by that time, uh, late 60s and during the 70s. Did not require the development of critique and agency, at least not in the sense of the concept that is discussed today. Not agency with this meaning that we have. It was another agency. 
uh, agency much more connected to the views of new liberalism nowadays that is making people prepared to work in industries okay this is you have to be efficient okay in uh, in in in, in, uh, in disciplines in what you do and so on so it consolidated vertically constructed hi hierarchical relationships and then this idea has uh, became a bit naturalized you know for teachers and students so obeying the teachers and not discussing with teachers okay and not you know raising you know uh, complex questions or difficult questions for the teachers to to answer was part of the education so part of the uh, uh, moral and civic um, discipline okay education that we had as a, as a discipline as well right so in the literacy programs that followed in brazil in the last decades coincidentally or not lots of emphasis has been given to structures <coughs> standards repetition monolingual and monocultural notions of language and culture in opposition to some contemporary views of literacy so whether it's a coincidence or not okay this is it, it may be debatable and at the same time you know uh, coincidentally because uh, the dictatorship was in the 60s in brazil and lasted till uh, 80s i would say beginning of 80s or some are going to say that it was not that far it, it didn't went, didn't go that far it finished before the 80s but okay this is also debatable and by that time we we started uh, uh, getting in touch with Freire's <coughs> works so I would say that uh, Freire's works is, uh, had started being disseminated in Brazil in the 60s and found much popularity so people started finding a lot of identification with uh, what uh, he uh, he, he described what he proposed, okay, in his ideas, though nowadays we do not follow exactly the same concepts of emancipation and freedom that he started disseminating by the time. So Freire's ideas of emancipation already aimed at responding to an inadequate proposal of literacy of previous decades. In, in his PhD dissertation, that I find this interesting, so Freire's dissertation, Defended in 1959, he contrasted the Brazilian democratic inexperience and the emergence of the people in the national public life, analyzing the pedagogical antinomy between education and domestication. So this idea that we've had, we've had uh, that history of, uh, let's say, coloniality or oppression, okay, through the moments of Jesuits and then colonialism or coloniality and also then the military influence that we had in the country. So this would make uh, many people believe or think or feel that that was a natural situation. This is the way that it is. This is the, the social order, okay? And, uh, ah, and to him, there was much more domestication than education, right? In his, according to his PhD dissertation. So from this work, he published a book advocating education as a practice of freedom. Okay, this is according to Saviani's regis registers. And it can be interpreted thus that this book raises the issue of, the issue of agency in education in Brazilian society. For me, uh, I would see the roots of what we've been doing okay, in his works that uh, through times uh, has had different you know, um, names, as I said before, as I started uh, talking about uh, emancipation, freedom, right? Freedom, emancipation, and autonomy, and we also uh, refer to it as agency nowadays. And the topic has at different times been named freedom, emancipation, autonomy, uh, although each term conveys its own characteristics and differences, along with the similarities. Lately, one more term and concept, subjectification, by an author. Uh, also, I was introduced to uh, by Lin Mario as well, Biesta or Besta. This is uh, Besta. This is uh, the author corrected our pronunciation. Okay, it's not <laughs> like that. Uh, seems to bring a significant contribution to the studies of agency. So, of course, that we may find the author contradictory, but the idea that he brings about subjectification is, a, is an interesting one to us, because for long, 
we've emphasized the idea of objectification. We had to find an object to do research about. Our texts had to be objective. We had to show objectivity in our research in order to be respected and had to have a credibility, right? Because of the kind of research methodology that we also had, things like that. So I like this idea of subjectification. Okay, that is also given importance to uh, to give importance to the subject, to the person. Okay, or that I that this person can also. Uh, build up meanings, okay, that are different from the given ones, <coughs> the ones that are imposed many times on them, right? So, uh, and this this also contributes with what we've been thinking about agency and, and active citizenship mm -hmm. as two of the actions that we could work on with teachers. So the idea, uh, the new studies of literacy are then posed as a possibility for agency promotion in view of their educational paradigm breaking proposals, right? So I've been talking about breaking paradigms with teachers, uh, not only uh, not not neglecting the importance of structures, okay, uh, things that I've pointed out before, but also telling them that that's not all. The world is not only that. There's more, okay, for them to to work on. So this is the idea. So they recognize a changing society that requires a renovated education in which critical literacy is going to be designed in favor of the enhancement of active citizenship, meaning making, as a way to make people review adversities in their daily lives when they feel immersed in processes they do not really understand. Agency before social dissatis dissatisfactions, and possibilities for, ex for or expectations of open participation and inclusiveness. This is this is a question mark mark here because this is also something that we can discuss. I think. And just to finish, the, the new start, the studies of literacy. Then I also I started explaining this this morning, right? That uh, what, the reasons why we went into literacy in Brazil. Um, also shows that digital societies promote the expansion of epistemologies within which new abilities and, cap and capacities are required, considering that new forms of work and social participation have emerged. So, ambitious work, I think, anyway. But uh, this is what we've been working on with, uh, with some outcomes. But okay, this is just uh, for you to think overnight why you do read the text, okay, it's not a long text, it's 25 pages, I think, right? Okay, so, is this so? This is so. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. So, thank you, Valkyria.